I would love to just keep knocking them out so I could completely ruin the holiday every November. It is going to be a very happy Thanksgiving. Let's see. What is the most important ingredient in a good, uh, good slasher film for you? Well, you need a great killer, a great iconic killer who uses interesting weapons. And, you know, we, we model them after a killer pilgrim. And when Jeff was doing the research in the script, he found out that the first governor really was named John Carver. So when history hands you a gift like that, you absolutely take it. Um, and then we found a picture of him and we made a mask out of him. I'm sure he was a perfectly nice governor. I think he died at 43. And one of the relatives, the girl in the diner, gets her face ripped. She, like, it's a, she's a relative of John Carver. She's a direct descendant of him. Yeah. So we actually have a John Carver relative in the movie being killed by John Carver. Um, and it was, it was great. I think you need a great, great, great killer and a really good twist. And what's fun is when the killer changes weapons. I like when, you know, I like Friday 13th because Jason uses different weapons. Most people probably know films like uh, Halloween and Friday. Um, but to you, what is the most overlooked slasher? Mute Witness by Anthony oh. Waller. Uh, it's an incredible film, especially the first 45 minutes or hour of that movie. I actually went to a 35 screening of it right before we shot Thanksgiving. I went with my DP, my editor. I mean, it's such a great, it's pure cinema. The cat and mouse of the slasher is so fantastic. Also, The Prowler is one of my favorites. Beautiful effects work by Tom Savini. And Pieces by Juan Piquer Simon, also known as Mil Gritos Tien La Noche. It's just one of my, it's, it's like pure junk food, but it's one of my favorites. But Mute Witness is probably the most uh, overlooked. Then there's some other Laraz films like Edge of the Axe. He's done some really good films, Spanish directors, Spanish slasher movies. Um, but yeah, Mute Witness is the one. The longer this goes, the more twisted it gets. The weapon he's using is straight off a Thanksgiving table. I don't want to spend my life looking over my shoulder. We need to stop him. We just talked about slashers and iconic slashers. All of these slashers movies, most of them have sequels. Could you see Thanksgiving getting being a, a franchise? Look, I had the time of my life making this movie, and Jeff's my best friend, and all we do is watch horror movies anyways. So if I spent the next few years just making Thanksgiving sequels or spinoffs, I would be so happy. It's entirely in the hands of the audience. You know, I feel like you get a movie like this once ever, I don't know, t five years, 10 years, like it's, it's gonna be a rare thing, but I'd love to make it this one. If this one's a hit, I would love to just keep knocking them out so I could completely ruin the holiday every November. There's always a, like a, a desert where there's no horror movies in November. Halloween ends and then all of a sudden it's family movies and Christmas movies. And I'm Jewish, so I don't want to sit through the Christmas movies. It's like I have to wait until January to get horror movies again. So I want to fill the November dry spell of horror movies, but it's entirely in the hands of the audience.